So Alejandra, um, you were inspired by this film from the books of uh, Guadalupe Loeza, uh, mm -hmm. Loeza, of course, and uh, she's she also uh, written uh, La, La Niña Bien. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, she wrote about um, uh, uh, the Mexican society uh, in the past, which was almost like 40 years ago. But you uh, kind of like um, revisited that time, of course, especially in this film. Uh, why do you feel that it's important to bring that up uh, today? Yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, to me, it's quite interesting that things haven't changed that much mm -hmm. since then. I think it's it's quite the same, but um, the the quality of those of those people have has has been different. I think, and to me, it was important to to change the way um, we speak about these women today. Mm -hmm. I thought I think Guadalupe did an amazing job back then by denouncing this and sort of. Uh, making these goddesses uh, normal people, and now I think we have to talk again about them and about the social inequality that exists in our societies. Mm -hmm. uh, and I found that was a thing that, uh, as it w was still happening, it was an interesting thing to to focus on. Mm -hmm. Um, your film uh, really sets on the 80s and it really captures um, um, that period of time but um, in your your press kit you just didn't want the, the actual setting to actually refrain from the main issues of the film. Uh, can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit more about that or elaborate a little bit more about that? I think that when people make period uh, films it's easy to get caught by the aesthetics of it because they're back, maybe because they're fashionable now or something. And it's easy to, to set the eye on those things instead of the social comparison or the character or something else. And I wanted it to be, to create the sensation of being in that time mm -hmm. rather than observe that time from now. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there, there were a couple of decisions that supported this because uh, maybe we had to choose over things things that weren't that pretty for right. example because it was a time with where we didn't have a nafta for example so yeah, yeah. you had you didn't have all the things or all the assets that that you can get now in mexico so and that's a very subtle thing but to me it was important to not have the best hairspray in the world because you right. weren't that wasn't available in Mexico at that time. Mm. Uh, tell us about uh, the the audition and the casting process for your the main character, Sofia. Tell us a little bit about mm, that. Well, Alejandra and Rodrigo, the producer, one of the producers, uh, just called me one day, and and they said to me they have a script about this book, which is very famous in Me in Mexico. And I just, I said, I'm very enthusiastic about it, but I don't want to laugh about those characters. I mean, uh, if this is a comedy, I'm not in, <laughs> because uh, I don't find it funny, mm -hmm. uh, this kind of classism, because it's so in there, still in there, uh, in Mexico. So, and Alejandra explain me what her idea was and obviously I fell in love with with her vision mm -hmm. and it was very easy to say yes right right of course how did you how did you remain in character throughout the film because it's it's it seems like it's a it's a downward spiral after Fernando starts losing um, um, mm -hmm. obviously money right uh, we work a lot before shooting the film. Uh, we read books, we saw films, we talked a lot, Alejandra and me, and we were, uh, we analyzed every line uh, and every scene. When Sofia aware what, what what is happening, is she conscious or not? When is it painful? When, when does she show the pain 
mm-hmm. when she contains it. I mean, it's all, it's, it's hard work. I mean, right. now I remember it and <laughs> I said, yeah, yeah, I mean, this is not uh, a, a free thing. Right. No, you have to, to work and al- analyze. And for me, it was a journey inside a woman I can despite. Mm-hmm. And I find when I was doing it, I found out my own fragility, my vulnerability, my fear to the emptiness, mm-hmm. to lose my power, to lose my status, because everyone has his own status, or her right. own status. And, and I just was very much, much close to Sofia than I thought I could be. Right, right. Um, so the film, uh, it actually took me back to the 80s um, when I was a little kid because my mom was always was very similar to Sofia. Everybody, <laughs> she's beautiful, yeah. everybody wanted to be like her. My dad was a lot like Fernando, like, you know, had everybody come over the place and blah, blah, blah. And they would, they would always have parties back in the 80s. So and the, the, the film actually brought me back to that time <laughs> when, you know, both my parents were happy, right? Mm-hmm. But um, the realism, as, as, as the movie states, is like when, when money starts uh, disappearing and not coming around, um, that, you know, life starts to go downhill, so to speak, and um, can you maybe um, elaborate on that and, and your connection to that time period, of course? I was actually born in 82, so uh, it's a curious thing. Uh, I remember my parents at that time as well. I think everyone sort of thought do remember those times like some um, difficult times but we we were on a better place before so the 70s maybe in mexico was a time where everyone thought that things were gonna be great Mm -hmm. that we were gonna be like the next oil uh, mega yeah Yeah. like the best country in the world and and things didn't turn out that way and it actually started a crisis that remains till now. It's the same kind of crisis that has repeated itself over and over in Mexico and we as a country didn't know that before so I think that was uh, so it's sort of as if Mexico was a sort of Sofia back then and 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 so I think uh, even if you didn't have this experience, like uh, literally, it was around, and everyone was experimenting something like this. Mm-hmm. Now, tell us about um, Tiff uh, actually backing up uh, women filmmakers and uh, women in the industry. Mm-hmm. Um, the share her journey. Uh, can you comment a little bit about that, and then how you see yourself in um, today's world of of uh, filmmaking, of course, and of course, act, acting. Well, I've I've always been impressed by TIFF because I think that's that has been uh, an interest of the festival uh, years before. So now I think it's exploding and it's amazing. I feel uh, very represented by this festival because of that. Mm-hmm. I I was just telling Ilse that I, I I've met filmmaker female film, filmmakers that inspire me and I can see myself in the future, you know, because they're older and you have, there are very little references for us in the industry, like what would I be, how can I be if I, if I keep doing this, so it's very inspiring to me and it's happened at TIFF before for me, so I think that's a very good thing for us. I think uh, we're in a time that in which we're becoming more aware of the discrimination women have suffered mm-hmm. along the years and things are changing maybe in a superficial way right. but they're changing and that's important and I, I always have this feeling that it's our subjects or themes or interests that don't really get the attention of people because it's not on the mainstream yet right. and I have this feeling that we're seated at the children's table you know like right. you're in the party but you're in the children's table yeah. oh, okay so but you're in the party right. no so you have to acknowledge that and be thankful for that 
and not, not to them, but to ourselves. Mm -hmm. no? I'm always thinking that we should see the children's table as the table. Right. And we shouldn't be like having this sensation of lack because we're not sit seated anywhere else. No, I, I love the children's table. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, for me, it's, um, I mean, it's great to have, to work with female directors and the crew was very full of women. Um, and the, the characters, I mean, this is a, a character and you, you get inside a woman, mm. uh, and you, and that's the 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 parts we are looking for. Right. I mean, powerful characters, interesting characters, and not only the the girlfriend or right. you know the the princess there. Right. The, I mean, all the stories are from the guys, the very interesting guys who are looking for a princess or something. Yeah, and this is all changing. Mm -hmm. Now, how does it feel to be here? Uh, your film, uh, not talk about your film, how does it feel to actually have your film here at the Toronto International Film Festival? Mm, well, this is amazing. I'm, I'm very flattered to be on the platform program of, the, of this year. TIFF is sort of my home. I premiered my first film here like three years ago, so it's it it all makes sense to me no right. it's, it's like a journey i've i've shared with the festival and with the city so i'm very honored i'm very pleased to be here again this is my first time in tiff nice and i'm very excited when you very honored and looking forward to see more films <laughs> not only ours and <laughs> because there are many many so many good films yeah, absolutely absolutely yeah. Well, thank you, ladies, for your time, you. and uh, good luck with the film here at uh, Toronto International Film Festival. Thank thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.